Welcome to this lesson in which we will conduct a further exploration of the text box control and its properties. Let's have some fun exploring additional properties on the uh, text box control. And we'll run this lesson really at two levels. And the first fundamental level that I want everybody to completely feel comfortable with is uh, using some of the additional property settings on the text box. Beyond that, this is kind of a clever little program uh, that I put together, and um, it uses some nifty uh, user interface techniques to um, bring the checkboxes into context when they're needed and show that they're there, but out of context when they're not available. And so that would be like the second level lesson to kind of understand and follow those interface techniques. And there's some fun logic behind that. So I invite you to explore that. But the fundamental level, what I want everybody to get is just the uh, text box control and how it works and some ex extra things we can do for it. So with that in mind, I'm going to show you the code running first, and then we'll explore how the code achieves what it does secondarily. So let's go ahead and run this. We've got a text box, uh, a whole bunch of checks, check boxes, and essentially what these check boxes are doing is toggling different properties of the text box on and off. Okay, so let's explore those. So here's our running program. And uh, I've set up the default uh, with a little Shakespeare here. Um, and if we scroll through it, it says, now is the winter of my discontent made glorious summer. Okay, so some sample text. And let's see what happens when we do what I've done so often, and that is to disable the box. Once it's disabled, what's nifty about that is uh, for a programmer, if you wanted to show something on the screen, but you don't want the user to enter it or uh, enter the te text box or change the control, if it's completely disabled, they can't select it, they can't do anything with it. Now, there may be a better way because oftentimes you're trying to um, highlight and copy text that was the result of a calculation or a process and notice that this stops you from doing that. So rather than disabling it, we could just set it to read only. And now you cannot come into this text box and change it, but you can notice, navigate in it. I could select the whole thing, press control C, and here I'll run notepad and bring that in and control V. And you can see that it, it copied the text that was uh, produced in that control. So that may be a little bit more useful. And of course we can have read only and disabled, but that's kind of redundant. It doesn't really do much for us, um, but we can turn those controls on and off. And again, all I'm doing is toggling the, those properties on this text box. Okay. Now let's get into a little thornier issue and that is notice that we have to scroll to see all of this. One way we could address that or if we had multiple um, uh, sentences, multiple lines with line breaks in them that we wanted to display, we could set the text box into multi-line and then it can uh, be put into a larger box. Notice we didn't have at design time the ability to uh, adjust the height unless you make it multi-line, which in case you can stretch out the height. I'm having the program do it for, for me automatically. Um, and now we can uh, display that. And uh, the word wrap by default, this is actually kind of backwards, is turned on. If I, if I toggle that off, then the um, uh, text is not wrapped. And now again, I would have to scroll to see it. Um, horizontal scrolling is a terrible idea. It's not something that human beings do kind of intuitively or naturally. So we try and avoid that wherever possible. So um, maybe uh, enabling the word wrap would be a better solution there. Now let's take a look at how the scroll bars work. And the scroll bars uh, are going to be contextually sensitive. So um, uh, for example, uh, the horizontal scroll bar is going to care whether word wrap is set on or off. Uh, the vertical scroll bar, we should be able to turn on and off just about any time. So uh, there it is. Um, it's there, but it's not uh, um, giving us a scroller because as it happens in this case, uh, the entire text 
fits into this, so I don't need to. If I was, um, uh, you know, uh, to s s turn the word wrap off, um, now again, I don't have multiple lines, so there's there's no vertical scroll. So the scroll bar is present, but it really doesn't have anything to do. Um, what about the horizontal scroll bar? Well, right now, with the word wrap um, disabled, uh, I can scroll horizontally, but it is an intelligent uh, control. And so if it doesn't have anything do, to do, in the case of the horizontal, since this screen real estate, horizontal screen real estate, or it's a horizontal control, so it's eating vertical screen real estate. That's really precious on most monitors. And so uh, what will happen is um, with the word wrap off, even though the scroll bar is enabled. So think of the scroll bar, the horizontal scroll bar being enabled. It's not needed, so it gets suppressed. Okay, so it's kind of, you might think, well, gee, the horizontal scroll bar isn't turned on. Well, it's, it's enabled, but it's not being used because of the state of the word wrap. It's not needed, it's not there. The vertical just kind of goes uh, dormant, but is still displayed there and we can, we can uh, take it off altogether if not needed, but that's up to the, the programmer to kind of figure out. Okay, so uh, the other thing that I've done that's kind of nifty, so we'll take this to the second level, is you notice that um, these three properties are sort of subordinate to the text uh, property multi-line. So if I'm not multi-line, I'm uh, disabling these checkbox controls because they really don't have anything to do if it's not multi-line. And so that's where I can make the, the, the difference there. And so how did I do that? We'll look at that in the code next. All right, so notice that uh, also, this is all event-driven uh, based on change events. And I'm using the change event for the different checkboxes to fire off what needs to be done. There's no like calc or go button here. Okay, so in order to see that, let's take a look at what I do. Let's start with uh, just the disabled checkbox. So when the disabled checkbox is uh, uh, changed, so here's our, our uh, control, I've named it CK disabled. And when it changes state, either being checked on or checked off, all I'm doing is I'm coming up here and I'm saying, hey, whatever state the txt demo was in, it's going to be in the opposite state. So if it was true, it goes to false. If it was false, it goes to true. I could put an if statement in there and build the logic, but since true is the opposite of false and false is the opposite of true, and like a, uh, one of those light switches in your houses that has two switches, so sometimes up is on unless somebody flipped the other switch, in which case down is on, um, we're just putting it in the opposite state. So I simply say text demo enabled is now going to be not text demo enabled. So if it was if this evaluates to true, it's going to be not true, which is to say false. If it was false, it will be not false, which is to say true. So it just binary toggle between one and the other. Kind of clever, huh? Okay, so we're doing the same thing there on the read only, uh, toggling it the opposite exactly the same way, and then. Um, what about the multi-line control? Well, the multi-line control, I'm doing exactly the same thing, but I'm also picking up those controls that are not relevant when the uh, box is not checked. And so I'm taking those individual check boxes, and if they were enabled, I'm making them disabled, and if they were disabled, I'm making them enabled. The only trick here is we need to make sure that we start with them in the right state and since they're going to be opposite enabled when when one you know if this is if multi-line is not checked they are not um, available if it is checked then they become available and so to do that we simply at our, our design time look at word wrap and if you take a look, the default state I've set to false instead of true. So it starts out being false. So when we first run the program, false, 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 these are all disabled until the check, check state on multi-line toggles, in which case they flip to the opposite, back and forth, back and forth. Kind of clever, huh? 
might even be a better user interface design to offset those a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that now. And so let's take these three controls and kind of show that they are subordinate to multi-line by setting them in a little bit. Does that make sense? Okay, so now we can see that these kind of relate to multi-line because they're inset and so they belong to the same or reference the same piece and they become enabled or disabled. Now, could we just make them invisible altogether? We could, but the principle that we're using here in the user interface design is show that something is possible, but not possible at the present time. So uh, they are uh, available commands, but they are currently out of context. That means the user should have a hint that something can be done to bring them into context. Uh, in exploring the interface, the user discovers, oh, when I do this, they become active and now I can start playing with these pieces and do different things with them. So kind of nifty, huh? Okay, so one last piece, and that is um, the uh, horizontal and vertical scroll bars um, are not mutually exclusive. So we, have, we can have um, none, we could have both, or we could have the horizontal or the vertical uh, turned on. And they're all controlled by one uh, property that can be set to 0, 1, 2, or 3. And the constants associated with those are none, uh, uh, vertical, horizontal, or both. And so let's see how we can do that by toggling the states. And so I've set that up with a case statement. And so uh, again, we want to uh, make sure that we have the initial states all set correctly. And if that's the case, then any change will uh, make the flip that we want uh, for that particular property. So here's our logic here. So with regard to changing the setting on the horizontal scroll, okay, we have the case where both are set, in which case we wanna remove the horizontal, which is to say we just turn the vertical on. So if it was both and horizontal gets flipped, then remove the horizontal and make it vertical. Well, what if it was um, horizontal and it was already horizontal but not vertical? Well, um, if all it was was horizontal and we're, we're flipping horizontal, then we go to none. If it was vertical was the only one that was on and we're flipping horizontal, now it's going to be both. And finally, if it was none and we're flipping horizontal, then it's horizontal. Those are the four possible cases. We could be uh, turning it off and there's nothing. We could be turning it off, leaving vertical. We could be turning it on and there's both, or we could be turning it on and there's only horizontal. And we do a, a, a similar kind of thing for the vertical. So kind of, kind of a clever interface and uh, the state just kind of takes care of itself once it's set up properly, again, making sure that we set our initial values where we want, otherwise our logic's gonna be a little bit backwards. So for instance, on the text box, the scroll bar state I've set initially to none. And so you can then turn them on here. So we run that and initially none, they are not checked, multi-line, and then I can add them. And now with the word wrap turned on, you can see them individually responding to our toggles. All right, so fun with, uh, with text box and properties and uh, a little bit of user interface design thrown into the mix. This concludes the lesson.